So in this video we continue doing TDD with ResMud, we do some exploratory testing at the same time, we change our design and we play some guitar. <laughs> So I'm just going to continue with the writing of the test and the game and I'll drop back in at some point to explain more if when we get something useful to explain. Okay, so you can see that as I was writing those tests, I refactored this a little bit to have a, a private helper method that just makes this a little bit more readable. You can also see that as I was doing it, the game teleport user to method does not return the location in the result, which is uh, fine. I might want to change that later on, but I'm not going to change that now because that's current behavior. So I added a look because I know that look returns the current uh, location and result. So this test works, but what eagle-eyed viewers will notice is that I haven't checked whether I can go back again. So I'm just going to quickly do that. Now you could be arguing, wait a minute, we didn't see that fail. You just added code into the uh, test there and we did not see that fail. And that's true. I've kind of done too much in the game here because I was creating the locations and I've put in both the downwards or the, the southwards and the northwards locations. Yeah, is that bad? Possibly. Does that invalidate the TDD process slightly? Yes, I agree. Do I care overly much? Not really. Uh, simply because I understand the game engine and how it works. And the only reason I'm putting these in is not strictly for TDD at this point. I'm putting these in for uh, checking in the future whether I screw up the map. So this is essentially what we would class as a regression test. It's no longer a TDD at this point. I've TDD downwards. This is now a regression test. I'm expecting these to pass. If they fail at this point, then I know that I've definitely screwed up and there's a game problem. But because I have previously tested this part of the location, and I know that this set of uh, navigation through the locations and the the uh, exits from the different locations works, I feel fairly confident in doing this. So this is not strictly a TDD process at this point, but from a tester perspective, I think it's necessary. And we often run into these difficulties and pro projects where uh, as a developer, I know that I don't need to do this to drive out more code, but as a tester, I know that I have not seen the application navigate back. So I don't necessarily know whether that works. So I'm, as a software engineer, who's doing the development and the testing, taking the view that I've tested it in the past, I know that the exits work, but for regression purposes going forward, I'm gonna put in these tests. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this test. Now the benefit is, because I've tested coming down and going back up in this test, what I can do in the future is just navigate directly to the hammer room or the VAS puzzle and start the uh, testing there. Because the puzzle is really just these two rooms. Everything else is navigation and fitting in with the actual game map. So let's start driving out the puzzle. So let's look at what this puzzle says. Uh, so I need to have a sign in the, so let's order this. So what is in the hammer room? 
Right, so in the hammer room, without a vase, we have got this and this. So let's make sure it says that. So there's a hammer chain to the wall. Now I have a couple of ways of doing that in the game, uh, but the way I'm going to do this is with a location object. Now, eagle-eyed viewers will notice that I've got an and in this test condition, which is not normally what we do, right? And is not normally what we do when we're test driving out, but I want this to be readable. I'm not testing low-level classes, I'm testing a fairly high-level interaction because I've got a game engine and a game, and I'm testing how the game is implemented with the game engine, and this makes sense to me. I'm gonna check that I can do a bunch of things with this hammer. That's, that's how I'm choosing to write these tests. So I'm not gonna navigate all the way through, I'm just gonna jump straight into the hammer room. I'm gonna look, check that I am there. Now this shouldn't fail. And that's test setup. So now I should be able to examine the hammer. Okay, so you might want to jump back again. I'm going to fast forward. Now, I haven't checked whether it's part of the set of objects in the location, I've just examined it. So I could add an assertion in to check that in the list of objects reported back, but I just have a quick check here to see if that is there. So we look in the location. This is the room with the hammer. There are the exits. I can see a bunch of stuff that is randomly generated by the game. And I can see a hammer. Right. Now, I'm pretty confident that would work simply because if the hammer wasn't here, I wouldn't be able to examine it because that's how the examine works. So I'm just checking that I can examine it. Now you notice I haven't checked the text. That's something I probably want to check in the future. But at this point in time, I'm just checking whether I can build this puzzle up. When I come to uh, doing my interaction and my exploratory testing, then I might check the text and see if it makes sense in context and have that human view of it. But I don't want to code that into the automated uh, checking here because that I, I'm likely to change it in the future and then I'm going to have to change this uh, code. What I could check is whether it actually has a statement when I've examined it but given the way that the game works and how I'm going to proceed I trust myself not to leave that blank. So I'm just going to satisfy myself with that. Okay so now if I use the hammer without having a vase then uh, I can't. So what I should be able to do then is say Okay, so that has worked. I don't know how to use the hammer, but I don't really want it to say I don't know how to use the hammer. I want it to say I have nothing to hammer at this point because I could always essentially use the hammer. So let's fix that. Okay, so at the moment when I try and use the hammer, it says I don't know how to use that. I want the game to give me a better message, so I put in a test assertion that says, if we have this, then it means we don't have that message, therefore I need to fix that now. And that's the way that TDD works. You put in the assertion for the code behavior that you next want to add, then you add that behavior. So a lot of this now is just gonna be me TDD building up the code to implement the puzzle. So I'm gonna stop the video there and when we come back I will show you the functional testing around this and how I extend the testing. Mm -hmm.